Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast. I am so excited. It is hump day, which is kind of like an amazing day here at The Toast. And I feel like it's extremely appropriate that I'm joined by Cody Rigsby on mm. this very special hump day. We, we love to hump on hump day. We do. I hope everyone out there gets to hump a little bit today. Yeah, someone they love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am so excited to talk to you. Good. I I'm know you've been making the rounds. Yes. Your book has come out. Yes, here XOXO it is. XOXO Cody. Mm -hmm. And I'm halfway through it. It's amazing. Thank you so much. And of course, like you have this fabulous life. I think everyone knows you from Peloton. Mm -hmm. You were on Dancing with the Stars and you're kind of just like, like a celebrity now. Isn't that so crazy? It is a little bit crazy. So when people say it, I'm like, uh, all but right. you are. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm fully embracing it. You're a star. You were on Dancing with the Stars. stars. You know, but some of the stars on that show are you questionable, know, you know. They definitely, you know, play, play fast and loose with the word star. Yes, 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 yes. You but know, not you. We're pivoting the way we define star. Yeah. Yes. I find so much about you so interesting, and I have to give credit where credit is due. Jackie has really been obsessed with you. She is a Peloton girl. Yes, yes, I've heard. I live in a small apartment, so, like, I just don't have that luxury, but she lives in a house. And okay, she well, a there's Peloton. the app, you know. You could, you can, you know, there's body weight classes. You, got me you know, there. I love a shameless plug. You, you know, got we're me always there. gonna find a way to pivot. <laughs> You got me there. Okay. Um, so she has loved you, and honestly, I was late to the game, okay. and I'm obsessed. Your book is so good. good. I'm only halfway through it, but there's so many interesting stories, and I feel like, of course, you live this fabulous life. Like we just said, you're a celebrity, mm -hmm. but you had this kind of crazy life up until that point, just filled with, I can't believe you worked at the box. I did. I did. I'm going to say I'm glad that you enjoyed my book because I heard that you think that men can't write books. I do. <laughs> but, let me say two things. So I hope I hope to be the exception to let that me, rule. Okay, wow, you really got me. I know, I got you, girl. Okay, let me say two things. Uh huh. I was really talking about fiction. Okay, okay, like, fair. They're not fair. good storytellers. That's fair. And like, let's be real, I was talking about straight men. And, like, and fair. If, Double fair. Like your writing style. Forget, is, forgive it. Yes. <laughs> your writing style is so funny and quick mm -hmm. and it's like the exact type of book I want to read. Yeah. And I love celebrity memoirs. It's like one of my favorite genres. And I totally give yours my stamp of approval. Good, it's good, good. excellent. And I really feel like you learned so much about you. And for me, like when I look at your life, I see so many interesting things. Like, yeah. of course, I don't, I can't even remember like a, a similar, someone to compare you to who really got so famous off of exercise like yeah and maybe like a Richard Simmons and I talk oh. about it later in the book yes like a Richard Simmons he yes. really created this platform where he was silly he didn't take himself so seriously he was fun he brought levity to this like kind of scary space I think when people think of fitness or starting a fitness yeah. journey they're like I don't know what I'm doing I'm gonna look stupid and Richard was like okay ladies get back we're yeah. gonna pump it to the oldies and I'm gonna look a fool for you so I do kind of pay homage to him in the book and give him credit where credit's due. It's giving Richard Simmons. It's yeah. also giving Lisa Rinna and her okay. tapes. Yeah. <laughs> Before or after the filler, you know? Before. Okay, good, 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 good. No, it's so interesting. And I just, I've loved reading about and about your journey. But what's so interesting about it too is I feel like you get on every day and there's 7 million homes, mm -hmm. right? And you talk. You talk and, and you talk, talk. And talk and talk and talk. And I have so many thoughts on that because, you know, the couple of handful of times I've worked out in my life, like I am not okay. <laughs> I have to literally go to the hospital for two hours uh -huh. afterwards. How, seriously, like how are you doing it all in terms of like physical fitness? And and were you in this kind of shape before you did your Peloton training? Okay, so as a kid growing up, I wasn't very athletic. I've said it before, like I was the tetherball champion of Guilford Middle School. <sighs> so that was like the extent of my physical abilities. Mm -hmm. Um, I became a dancer, so that right. is obviously very physical, um, and you have to hold a lot of stamina doing that. But I had never taught a fitness class before, so like talking, teaching a class, knowing the programming was all foreign to me. Um, so it took me a lot of time to figure out how to build that stamina, mm -hmm. but also I was a very eccentric child. Yes. So I've always been someone that just talks and talks and talks mm -hmm. and talks. So it wasn't until I realized that like I could be myself and do this little fitness gig and like infuse the two together that I was really able to like find who I was yeah. and like kind of do it in a really singular way that I don't see really anyone being else done doing. Out. Yeah, you know? Yeah, and I, I really love, I was, that's what I was shocked to find out in your book is that like, you didn't have this crazy fitness background. Mm -mm. Peloton really trained you. They saw something yeah. in you. And I think that's so cool mm -hmm. and not what I would have expected. I would have expected you were like making waves in the fitness scene. No, not at which all. Which I wouldn't have heard about. Yeah, yeah, no, but like, that's the thing is I, I've been in the company for nine years. Mm -hmm. So back then it was just a startup and right. they were just like trying to find talent and they're like, 
you're cute, you'll do, you yeah. know? So they were willing to take a chance on someone who didn't know what they were doing. And I also was like, okay, I've got to just figure it out. Yeah. And I figured it out. That was part of your book that really resonated with mm -hmm. me. That's when I knew I liked the book. It was literally on like page four mm -hmm. when you were just like, I'm not going to, you know, be shy. I knew when I was a young kid, like I knew I was a star. Yeah. And not to make everything about me, like I related to that on a deep mm -hmm. level. Like I really, and I think it's okay to say that. I Absolutely. Like I'm special. Because no one, if you don't say it, other people are not going no to. No one else will. Yes. It's so true. You got to, you got to know that you're a star, baby. So you talk while you're working out, which to me is just unbelievable. <laughs> and you have this unbelievable personality mm -hmm. and, and immediately connected with people. And you do, and you became known for like a lot of your pop culture tastes. Yes. Now, you and I differ. Okay. On certain things, and we'll get into that. I, lo I love a healthy debate, especially on debate. pop stars, on pop culture. Yes. I think it like, it just keeps friendships, mm -hmm. you know, going. And it's not that deep. It's not that deep. It's not it that can deep. get a little nasty, but it all is forgiven. But you know, I know that you and I will meet in the middle when it comes to Kelly Clarkson. Okay, all and, right, all and right. for that, I think we're, we're safe. We, everybody loves Kelly, the, but, the original American Idol. Literally America's sweetheart. And I, this is my hot take on that, is like, our country was the most united mm -hmm. when we elected Kelly Clarkson as an American Idol. I was calling. I was like, voting. We, were, we picked up the phone on singular wireless. Right. We dialed up the number mm -hmm. and we called 10 times. I was an Optimum girl. Like, okay, yeah. Optimum. Yeah. <laughs> But Did yes. you grow up in the Northeast? Yes. Okay, that's why. I no, was in we the South. Doing... I was in the South. Oh, right. We... Yeah, North Carolina. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we were doing the work. We were doing the work. And I feel good about what we did. But I do feel like as a nation, <laughs> we have sort of let, Car let Kelly Clarkson down in recent really? years. I don't feel like she gets nearly the amount of hype that she really deserves as a vocalist, as talent. Wow. As, like she, she should, she, and she's huge. Yeah. She should be bigger. I think the gays do. I agree. The her gay, and Carly Rae. The gay, yes. The gays will give Kelly her, her flower hours and then some it's true she's also just made this like great pivot where she's like a talk show host uh -huh. she's on the she's on the voice like she is really keeping the nbc network like Alive. she's holding it on her back i know no wonder she's like always tired like she's yeah. literally has the whole world on her shoulders yeah and i got to be on her show and that was a, <gasps> tell me everything it, she, was, she was amazing it was Wait. very quick it was like i arrived uh, Behind her pick, she like has a massive pickup truck in the lot. So like, I got dropped off in front. Of course, yeah. they like whisk me to the green room. Ten minutes later, they're like, "You're on!" And like, wow. I, the doors open, and I'm meeting Kelly Clarkson, and, and she's asking me about my life. And I'm sure she was a doll, but oh, amazing, confirmed. incredible, but just quick. Yeah, she has no Keeping time. Keeping the show going. She's a mother. She's yes. a singer. She's a businesswoman. She's yes. a mogul. She doesn't have time. She doesn't have time. And so you have gotten you know so popular, and people really tune in because they love your classes, but they really want to hear what you have to say. Yeah on what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And I know you've experienced, you know, some of your hot takes not being received so well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm gonna ask you a question and then I'm also gonna ask you to move your mic a little closer to your mouth. <laughs> okay, you there. can pull it, yeah, yeah. There good. we go. How does that make you feel? Like, does that give you anxiety? Like when you say something and people like, I, it's cause it does for me. I'm okay, a people pleaser. This is fair. Like, I, um, I think it comes back to, yeah, I'll say yes. So most of the time, like my hot takes, I'm just like throwing them out there and I, I don't care. And I'm just like, you know what? Like. <clears throat> Let's have fun. Yeah. I think in the era that we're in, um, sometimes really people take things to heart and they're not understanding the tone that you're saying, the sarcasm, right. the levity, the fun. Like we're just ha trying to have fun and people right. take it very seriously right. and then tend to like throw some nastiness mm -hmm. at you. Um, and for the most part, I can take it. I'm mm -hmm. fine. But yeah, I think once it starts to compile, it kind of gets, gets you. It gets to you, and, and you that's have to so disconnect. Normal. Yes. You have to disconnect Touch and be grass. like, I need like let this pass, and like we'll keep pumping. But yeah, yeah it, and I feel like for you, like at the end of the day, your goal is just to like get everyone through their workouts, right? Yeah, and be be silly, be fun, and it's like it would be the same conversation like we just talked about. If we're debating something or being stupid with friends. Mm -hmm. We're, it's not going to have any weight. It's not that deep. It's not that deep, boo. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I agree with that. So I'm really excited to get your takes on a lot of the stories. because okay. I know. By the way, I was cackling when you dedicated your book to Britney Spears. Yes, the one and only. So funny. And we have a Britney story today. Yes. I was going to talk about it anyway, but I would love to hear your Yeah. Because it's an interesting time to be a, to be a BJS <laughs> stan. Would, 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 would you, you say? Better, you better use the middle name. <laughs> would you say? Mm, yeah, it's, it's getting really challenging. <laughs> For us to like stand for our girl and also be very adamant about the like still hashtag free Britney. Right. 
Because so she's where free. Were you, where were you during the Free Britney movement? Like, I was letting the girls know that, yeah. like, she was under conservatorship. Like, it's been way too long. People are taking her yeah. money. All true. Relatives are not treating her well. Mm -hmm. Certain Dancing with the Stars contestants, named to be named. <gasps> oh, yes. Wait, was okay. that your season? No, no, she's oh. on it right now. Oh, you're right. Oh, my God. Yes. I can't. And yes. Premier, we also have a Dancing with the Stars story. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, so it's right. getting hard. But here's my take mm -hmm. is that, like, and I hate to use the word like crazy, so I'm not gonna use it. Just like okay. everyone has the right to be as unhinged as they possibly want. Yes. Um, just, and as long as like you're not hurting yourself or others, mm -hmm. then like be as unhinged as you want. Everyone has the right to be a mess. Um, so let Britney be a mess. I will also say this, and this is kind of on a more serious note. Yeah. Like, I take care of my mom, and there was a point where I moved her from North Carolina to to Brooklyn. Brooklyn and her doctor was prescribing her lithium oh my god yeah and like she became lithium toxic and <gasps> it really had kind of irreversible effects yes. on her and I've been able to like things are better but there's definitely like you know things that are irreversible within my mom that I've witnessed and so you know the stories are is that they were prescribing Britney yeah. like lithium and so part of me in a way feels like where she's at right now isn't necessarily her fault. No, of course not. And we need to have a little bit more grace and understanding compassion. and compassion. That being said, like, I would love to see her stop, like, shopping at stripper <laughs> store. Like, I feel like she gets all her attire that she yeah. wears from, like, the mall, the the mall, like, sex store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, she got the stripper pole. Hot topic. And, yeah, like, not even. And, like, honey, I don't, the knives concerned me. We have a story about the knives The today. knives concerned me. That actually, I think, like, was a, uh, and she actually gives an explanation and we'll talk about it. But to me, like, I see her videos. I'm like, you know what? It's not what I would do. No. But she's enjoying her life. Yes. The knives, I think. Were concerning. <laughs> they were. And I, I do want, I like, I guess, not that I'm worried about the kids, but like. I know. If that was my mom, I'd be like. Damn. Well, you talk a lot about your family in the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's so interesting to me is like, I think the first word most people would use to describe you is like out there, uh -huh, funny, uh -huh. effervescent, I'll take it. outgoing. Mm -hmm. And you've dealt with so much. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people probably really, I lost my dad too. So mm. hearing about you experiencing that was really um, relatable. And I think I think a lot of people would wonder how you maintain that level of outgoing, like we were just saying, effervescent, when you've dealt with what you've dealt with. Um, I think for me, like life has been hard. Like I've dealt with homelessness. My, my father died when I was young. My mom had addiction issues. So life was heavy, but like I embraced that and forgave a lot of that. Yeah. Like I forgave my mom for her mistakes. Also came to kind of understand, and you might not relate to this, like my dad also died of an overdose and I kind of growing up like was resentful or sad that I didn't have a dad but as I grew up I was like it was probably for the better right. that this person wasn't in my life it would have made it so much more chaotic right. and how can I really have an attachment to someone that I didn't necessarily know mm -hmm. so I've kind of like processed that yeah let it go and really just tried to find the joy in life mm -hmm. I think also <laughs> as a kid growing up with a lot of trauma I used like comedy and fun of course to kind of cope yeah and get through and that's been like a defense mechanism, but I think I've also embraced that and just known that that's who I am. Yeah, I think people, uh, and you know, through no fault of their own, it swallows them up, like especially yeah. grief. And you can either choose to laugh at life and move past it, but sometimes it's hard. And I think people really look at you and find it very inspiring. Thank you, I, re I really do appreciate it. I always say like, yes, life is hard, but like laugh at it so you can laugh at yourself and it you don't give shame or guilt power you like you embrace your own power yeah so now that you're an author uh-huh do you have because this happened to me like i had this kind of like i don't want to use the word like like i thought it was better than everyone like i'm an mm -hmm. author <laughs> are you experiencing that um no your team is nodding <laughs> no. your team i, I want it noted your team is nodding I, I don't think i'm better than anybody mm -hmm. i think i've i've elevated and evolved and i think it's a new thing era. for me era sure yes um i mean i was really excited about being a new york times best-selling author yes yeah, <laughs> thank awesome. you yes no, it, that that really popped off for me and made like all the hard work feel really good no, and that's something nobody can take away from you exactly like and that's so legit my colleague Tunde was like it's like getting a doctorate degree like it, no, they can't is. take that <laughs> they, and anytime you do anything like if you're gonna speak on a panel or they're yeah gonna they're gonna you, say that they're gonna say 
fitness enthusiast, New York Times bestselling yes, author, opinionated yes. homosexual, <laughs> Cody Rigsby. It's just, it's so sick. Now can we just get it on my Amex? Like, can it just, you know how they have doctor on the Amex? You know, I might know a guy. Okay, thank you. You know Brian Kelly? You. <laughs> yes. I feel like he could get it okay, done. Okay, good, 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 good. So you're going to join me for all the hot stories of the day. And all then right. we're going to do, you're very well known for giving advice. Your book is called XOXO Cody. Mm -hmm. You actually give advice in the book. Yeah. And you do a segment on Peloton, which I love, mm -hmm. called XOXO Cody, where your writer, yeah. writers will write in. With, yeah. So you're going to help me out with that. All and right. we have a lot of stories that I just want to issue, you know, a bit of a trigger warning. Our first story is about Taylor Swift. Okay, here we go. And one of the things I think a lot of people know about <laughs> you is you made waves. Uh -huh. Just kind of, you know, giving your thoughts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They weren't overwhelmingly positive. Positive. No, no. Taylor's you, just not my girl. Okay, give just kind of set the scene for everyone who might not be familiar with your stance. Oh, wow. I just like, Taylor's not my girl. I don't really react to her music. I don't really react to like things that she does in pop culture. She's just not for me. Have you tried? I have. Okay. I have. So I had a boyfriend in college who loved Taylor Swift. And for the record, like, I really did enjoy, like, the country era. Like, of course. Teardrops on My Guitar, Tim McGraw. Obsessed. I really loved that. Mm -hmm. I really did. I, I love those two songs. And I will admit here, like, I love Tim McGraw, uh, Teardrops on My Guitar, and for the 1989 girlies, mm -hmm. like, I, I will I will say this, like, Bad Blood does slap. 100%. It slaps. I do slaps. love that song. I hate to admit it. And that's about the extent of my just, love for Taylor's music. I'm, I will try and you seem like a, a smart person. Like mm -hmm. I can't change your mind. No, no, it's and, fine. And I'm like that too. Like, if like I feel the same way about ACDC and Led Zeppelin. Like it's oh not for me. God. You know okay. what I'm saying? All right, you take it a little. Far. Okay, okay, there we go. No, but like, okay, so I'm not going to try and convince you of anything. I just I find it so surprising mm -hmm. because you clearly like love and ride for so many yes. pop girlies. Yes. So who would you say is your number one, Britney? Britney's my number one, but you know, like she's not putting anything out. So true. So like a lot of it's nostalgic. Yes. But I think Beyonce at this point is like my number one. Like she's putting out relevant music. The last album was really for the girls, gays, and theys. Yeah. The Renaissance tour was the best thing I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. She's still giving 110%. Yep. Um, like there's just nobody else out there like her. I'm going to rattle off some of the pop girlies and you give me like your immediate thoughts. Okay. So we did Beyonce. Okay. We did Taylor. Kim Petras. Kim Petras. Um, uh, Trailblazer. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. I think that's the sound that I want to hear from pop music, but the world doesn't want to hear that. Oh. The world doesn't like pop music. By the way, that's an amazing take. Like they, they're, she makes great music, but the world doesn't want that. She makes the best music. Like so fun. She her Early. vocals are so good. Yes. That's an amazing call. Yeah. Okay, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Um, oof. Um, mm, like she, <laughs> my thing is like, <laughs> she really changed the pop stars fashions yeah. before Lady Gaga, everybody was wearing like a dress over a jean and then Lady yeah. Gaga popped off and everyone was in a bodysuit, Elevated. including Beyonce. Yeah. Like go back. No, I love that. Like Beyonce was wearing some choices that Tina Knowles made for her. <laughs> and then Lady Gaga <laughs> said, I'm going to get the girls together. Yeah, you're right. And everyone was in like. A shoulder pad, yep. a bodysuit, a platform, a, a, a bob bang. Like it, it was giving. You it's know like what I'm saying? It's an amazing call. Yeah, like Katy Perry. Katy Perry, uh, the the queen of corny. I think she makes the most <gasps> oh amazing. God. These are corny, amazing takes. Corny songs that like everybody loves to sing, and they just make you feel girly mm -hmm. and fun. Yeah. Ari. Ariana. Ooh. Um. Mmm. Mmm. <sighs> Messy? Not messy. Like, such a great musician. One of the better vocalists of our time. Agreed. Like, no one's singing like her right mm -hmm. now. Like, you know what I'm Period. saying? Like, nobody can sing like her. Mm -hmm. um, the choices in men. Is unique. It's unique. It's I, unique. I want to know, I want to, like, unpack that. Yeah, it's definitely bizarre. It definitely, I think, is indicative of growing up um a child it, star? Yeah, like in musical theater. Okay, yes, 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 yes. But they're not the choices I would make not if the I choices was this I'm young, making. hot thing in yeah. Hollywood. It, mm, yeah, it's like she's at theater camp and she's only, she's finding the one heterosexual. Exactly. No, exactly. <laughs> it, like, right? Yeah. And that one heterosexual has definitely gotten their dick sucked yeah. by a man. Because he's a victim of circumstance. Yeah, yeah. He, he was there. He wanted to try it. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. I'm glad he tried. He tried. 
and he knew he didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I and I respect him for that. Have you ever guest judged on Drag Race? No, it's my dream job and they w will not call me. Really? We got to make like that you're such happen. It's an obvious choice. I know. We're going to make it. We're going to manifest it. Let's manifest it. I would love to see you on there. Thank you. What are your who's your number one drag queen Ooh, of all time? Number 1. From the show contestants wise. Oh, that's a hard one, but I, who I really respect is like Shangela, Bob the Drag Queen. I love Eureka, mm -hmm. Trixie, of I course. I love Eureka. Uh, Eureka's Eureka is probably one of my favorites just because she was so herself. Yeah. Kind of annoying like me. Yeah. And it can be a lot for some people. And it can be a lot. Some of the, some but of the girls. she embraced it. And what I also like is from her season. Well, she was on one season. Mm -hmm. She kind of. She hurt she, herself. She hurt herself. <clears throat> oh, she's a fan. Okay. I oh, love yeah. It. No, she. And I was okay. very upset because I do feel like I love Drag Race, but I feel like the plus size queens get no love. No love. It's hard for the big girls. I know. Um, But from her first season to her comeback season, I feel like she really did some work yeah. and changed as a person and was like, hey, I'm being annoying and abrasive. I'm being annoying. And I'm going to like, I'm going to work on myself a little bit. Can and I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like we have similar personalities mm -hmm. and big personalities. Yeah, very big. And I think sometimes people with big personalities, like are, I'm self-aware enough to know like I'm not for everyone and sometimes yeah. I could be annoying. Yeah. Is that something you deal with like self-consciously? Like, am I too much and should I pull back? No. No, love no, that. No, I, I think I've always just known I'm like, I'm not, I'm a lot. I think when I was a kid, of course, I wanted yeah. to be liked by everybody. Right. But I think I was like, I'm a lot, I'm loud, I'm opinionated. And once I accepted that, I really found my voice, especially like within the public eye and at Peloton. Mm -hmm. And people embrace it and they love that. And like, you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. So true. And that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, Cody Riggs, we have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Are you ready for the fast five stories? Let's go. Today's episode of The Toast is brought to you by Saks.com. We are always doing our best when it comes to looking fabulous on this here podcast. Sometimes our pajama uniforms and our sweatshirts, sad, need a little bit of an upgrade though. And that's why we love shopping at Saks.com for everything from podcast looks, GNO outfits. You know, I'm saying yes to life this year and that requires quite a bit of a wardrobe and Saks.com has me covered from head to toe. It is super fun and easy to shop on Saks.com. Whether you're going for a cozy vibe, which more often than not I am, or if you're looking for a more elevated look, they have got it all at Saks.com. At Saks.com, it's also so easy to shop. There's so many different ways to filter through the results. You can shop by your star sign or even by your situation. Like if you're going on vacation and you need looks, they make it really easy to filter for exactly what you're looking for. It's like finding the perfect revenge dress from brands like Christopher Esberg, Cult Gaia. They have, I feel like Saks is so good at discovering like the best new hot brand that you can buy. And then like next year, everyone's going to have it and you're going to be cooler than everyone because you shop at Saks.com. So you can discover new ways to shop for everything every day at Saks.com. As a New Yorker, Saks is like a institution and I love shopping there. I think their um, customer service and their delivery are fabulous. Easy returns. I love shopping at Saks.com. Can't recommend them enough. And that's how I stay looking so stylish, not going to lie, because I'm stunting on everyone thanks to Saks.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Nutrafol. So as you guys know, I have experienced hair shedding in the last year. And did you know that hair thinning will happen to approximately one in two women? If you're among them, no, you're not alone. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's so normal. And Nutrafol helps women address it from within with science-backed supplements. So Nutrafol, what is it? It is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. It's clinically shown to improve visible thickness and strength. And I can attest to that 100%. I started my hair growth journey at the beginning of the year and when I reached out to like people on Instagram or just like my close family and friends, everyone recommended Nutrafol. From postpartum to menopause to plant-based lifestyle, whatever your life stage is, Nutrafol has four unique formulas to support women. Each is physician formulated and it uses drug-free science-backed ingredients so you get the most reliable results. You go to Nutrafol.com, take their hair health uh, wellness quiz, and then you can identify causes of your thinning and Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better hair growth through their whole body approach. So there's a million different reasons why you might be experiencing it. It's totally normal. Normal. Like I said, menopause, um, postpartum, I experienced it because I had like a complete shift in diet and that is really natural to cause hair thinning and hair shedding. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol women's hair growth supplement for six months. Take the first step to visibly, visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off their first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter promo code THETOAST. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for health your hair. Nutrafol.com and that's spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code the toast. That's Nutrafol.com promo code the toast. 
Today's episode is brought to you by Lululemon because we are celebrating the fact that legging season is upon us. We don't have to wear shorts and shave our legs anymore. It's legging season, it's comfy sweater season, and Lululemon is the place to shop if you need leggings. I love all of my Lululemon leggings. I think they make the best leggings. I really, I'm very particular about leggings. I don't like to be constricted. I don't like to not be able to breathe. And Lululemon has it all this season. So they have a ton of different leggings. The fast and free leggings, which are powered by their new Lux fabric. They're really weightless. They have incredible coverage and they're designed for those looking for a legging that gives them complete freedom from distractions while running or jogging. They also have the Wonder Train legging, which is designed with one of their most innovative fabrics, which is Everlux. It is their fastest drying fabric. So that legging allows you to work hard and feel dry. So you can effortly transition from sweat to street if you're working out but you also want to run errands like you're not going to be in your soggy clothes all day and you can actually get sick that way so don't do that um it's great for act any activities and then the align leggings which are personally my favorite ones they're uh, powered by the nulu fabric so it's really for the person who wants a lightweight low compression yoga solution that is also versatile enough for casual wear because say with me you don't have to work out to wear workout clothing it gives the wearer a next to nothing body sensation it has full freedom of movement and it doesn't restrict or compress whoever's wearing it it's great for low intensity workouts like yoga or just casual wear pair it with a sweater maybe a pair of boots you know it's autumn girl it's girl fall girl autumn what are they calling it christian girl autumn whatever get into the lululemon leggings at lululemon.com that's l-u-l-u-l-e-m-o-n.com okay so our first story is about taylor okay now i'm gonna give everyone the update but what are your thoughts on her dating travis kelsey this you know okay. monumental moment yeah, yeah, yeah he's hot Extremely. first of all first of all very hot love the mustache he's a little bit like uh, you know, goofy, corn fed, trashy. Oh, not I'm corn here for, fed. I love a corn a corn fed. I agree. Um, so he's hot. Mm-hmm. Um, also like she definitely needs someone tall. She's a tall gal. Yeah. It's hard out there for tall girls, especially if you're wearing heels. Mm-hmm. These men are very intimidated by a tall girl. Mm-hmm. So like she needs a tall man. He's tall. Um, she also needs someone that is successful. She's one of, if not the most successful woman in music and in the world mm-hmm. right now. So she needs someone successful, but like adjacent or, not, or like on a different lane. They're yes. not sharing the same space. Like he's not a musician. Mm-hmm. He's not going to get intimidated. Like yep. he's at the game. He's throwing the ball or catching the ball. Catching. I'm not sh- catching the ball. He had a show called He's a catching bottom. Kelsey. Great. Wonderful. He's okay. He's a bottom. Um, so he's out there catching ball- <laughs> the ball. <laughs> And, you know, he looks great in red. He and does. And so I think it's good. And But, like, I'm I'm really interested to see, like, I saw, like, his jerseys, like, number five. Like, 87. The, oh, number 87? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm saying, like, of purchases on the NFL <gasps> oh, website. Oh, yeah. They went it's up like, 400%. Yeah, it's 400%. So the girls, the, the Swifties are buying the jerseys. I just, like, can't wait to see, like, when they break up. Like, no, I know. he's going to, they are going to let him have it. He's going to literally never want to leave his house like, again. The girls say that Taylor doesn't write songs about exes anymore. I I can't like say no, yay or nay does. to that. By the way, she does. I think what the Swifties have a problem with, if I could be a representative okay, for the Swifties, okay. is when people minimize Taylor's and all of her success, being like, oh, she just writes songs about her no, ex boyfriend. No, I, I won't say that. I won't so, say that. But, but I, she does write she a lot about, about her, her life. Ex- yes, she about yes, her life. yes, and that encompasses men. Like, yes, it like does. Like our lives. And. You know, I think it's worth mentioning that pretty much everyone writes about love. Every song ever is written about yes. love, but when Taylor yes. does it, it's like an issue. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Fair, 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 fair take. Yeah. Um, I just am gonna really look forward to that man. <laughs> that I pray for that boy when in a year there are football analogies in one of her songs. Oh, for sure. And they are like leaving snakes all over his Instagram. Yeah. So brace this man for impact. Keep him in your prayers right now. What the Swifties giveth, the Swifties the whole they will take, take it. it away. Yes, he got 400,000 Instagram followers. <laughs> yes, his jerseys went up in sales by 400%. Yes, there were 25 million people watching that game. What the Swifties giveth, the Swifties will take but, it okay, away. Okay, here's also, here's like, because I love pop culture, I guess. Let's like manifest though, like him, a a year and so from here, so Super Bowl twenty twenty five. Okay. Taylor's performing and he's in the game. Oh, what are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on Usher? Usher being, being the Super Bowl. One performer. of the only men that I would allow to be the Super Bowl like headliner, because a take that I have is like get men off that stage. Oh my god, you are making the best calls today. Get like, men off that stage I immediately. I completely agree. Like, why are they on that stage doing nothing? Except I, I don't think that applies to Bruno Mars. Oh my God, we are so in alignment. That okay, is good. the one that I, he, his Super Bowl performance, I was not a fan. I was like, okay, whatever. 
I watched that and I was like, oh, this boy's turning it. Yeah. He was incredible. No, I have gone back and watched it. It's like one of my favorite activities like on a Saturday so night good. when I'm drunk. I'm like, guys, let's... Let's watch Bruno Mars. What if we just watch Bruno Mars at the Super Bowl? <laughs> okay, I agree so, with you. Yeah. Usher is, Usher's, I think... And he has a catalog. He's my favorite male artist of all time. Really? Yeah, because he's a slut, but he also like loves being in love. Okay, And I relate to that. Like, I'm I'm assuming, I don't want to make assumptions, but mm. I'm assuming you're familiar with Mr. G. Yes, yes. She's a slut and she knows yeah. it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's literally Usher. That show would uh, not no. go these days. When I was in college. <laughs> it was wildly inappropriate. It was beyond inappropriate. When I was in college, I was an intern at the Huffington Post. Okay. And they had a Halloween party. Okay, great. So I was in my Jimmy obsession and I dressed mm. up as Jimmy Private School. When I tell you not one person knew who I was, I looked so fucking <laughs> stupid, but it was the best costume of all time. I wasn't appreciated in my own time. You should have been. What's the best Halloween costume you've ever done? Oh, wow. Best Halloween costume that I've ever done. Do you do a lot of pop culture? No, just... I'm actually like kind of a more nerdy girl. Like mm. I did like video games and like Marvel growing up. Oh. Last year I was Rogue and my ass looked really good. Rogue from What's the X-Men. Rogue? Rogue from the X-Men. So, you know, oh, you're not, not geeky enough. Uh -huh. Wow, you really have so many me, interests. I know. Me and my friend... We, me and my best friend, we we dressed up as Cammy and Chun Li from um, Street Fighter, and it was really great because like, I I'm was like, a, I know it's fine, but it's so important to have hobbies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Anything I do, I just have to be a slut because that's the rule. I love that. Yeah. Um, okay, so the update from the Travis Kelsey thing. I don't know yes, if you know yes, this, yes, but yes. Travis and his brother have a podcast. Oh, wonderful. It launched last year when they became really popular because they were both playing in the Super Bowl and it was the first time mm. two brothers had ever been oh, in the Super Bowl. Oh, th that was them? Yes. Oh, wow, I had no idea. So they launched a podcast and people, they're just, America has fallen in love with them. Mm -hmm. and they're hot. They, they're hot. <laughs> they're hot. And they're so different. Like Jason is a family man. Mm. He has three kids. He lives in Pennsylvania. Oh, He's been on the same team for a million years. He's kind of like the steady one. Okay. And Travis is more of like the... He's a little bit more of the starry, flashy one. Yeah. Um, he won the Super Bowl oh. against his brother. Oh, right. Yeah, and right, his parents right. were there. So like he has a, a ring, thing. and he probably brings it up every he Thanksgiving. Two, for sure. Actually. Oh, two. I'm yeah. so sorry. Okay. So on their podcast this week, it came out this morning, he's talking about Taylor. So they uh -huh. really turned that around quickly because she was at the game on Sunday. or Maybe Sunday. the press. Yeah. And it's not gonna last, it might not last forever. The, the number press. one podcast in the world. They talked about it for <laughs> 35 seconds, mm. and it's literally number one on you. It's, it's number one everywhere. But here's basically what he said. Mm. I want to respect both of our lives. She's not in the media as much as I am doing this show every single week and having uh, fun during the NFL season, but I'm enjoying life and I sure as hell enjoyed this weekend. Everything's moving forward. Mm -hmm. I think me talking about sports will just have to be where I keep it. So he's basically saying like, yes, this is real, but I'm not going to be talking about it. I don't think that's through a choice of his own. He has a great publicist. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't remember a time where some... Are you his publicist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obsessed. <laughs> We'll talk later. We will get drinks. No, I can't remember a time where a, uh, an athlete has become so famous so quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always been, people know him. In the sports world, he's always been a very good player. And I was going to say, is he like, is he good? Excellent. He's, but he's got two rings. He's like the best at what he does. Oh, and that is? <clears throat> I'm going to say tight end, correct? Tight end. I'm so into sports. The, the football I'm not positions like other girls. are so gay, but okay, uh, great. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's a tight end, and my most favorite thing about him, which I think you would really find interesting, is that I want to say in like 2011, I can't mm -hmm. remember what right year, he was obviously like experiencing a lull in his career. Okay. I think he's actually said recently that he did it because he was uh, in, a fi in financial straits and he had blown through his rookie money. He did a dating show on oh. E! <laughs> called Catching like, Kelsey. What website? <laughs> what, what website was he on? Okay. okay, he did a dating show. Called Catching Kelsey. Catching Kelsey. What what network was it on? E. It was actually... Oh, Eve. I, That's very I Eve. recently went back and watched it. It was hysterical. And the girl who won, they ended up dating for four or five months. Okay. She's now speaking out. <gasps> and she said, it was the like funniest thing. She goes, I'm a girl's girl. So I want to tell Taylor, like, once a cheater, always a cheater. Oh, gosh. No, I don't okay. know if a girl's girl would go to the Daily Mail. Yeah. I think a girl's girl would go to Taylor, had that been the I truth. I don't know if she has access to Taylor Swift, but, you know, it's okay. Such, such <laughs> a good point. <laughs> you know, um, It was just very hypocritical. Like, well, you know. It's also how, 2011. It was a long That's time ago. 12 years ago. Like, let a man change. Yeah. That's a little rude. Oh, yeah. In your book, you talked about how you cheated on an... Um... <laughs> Damn, read, drag me, bitch. Sorry, no, but no, I thought no, that was go. very honest of you. Yeah, yeah, no. I definitely I cheated on a lot of boyfriends. But really? I was also, like, young and dumb, and, like, I yeah. didn't go... To, and then I finally went to therapy and was like, hey, bitch, like... That's why. Stop. Yeah. Stop being a dumbass. Yeah, that was interesting. So I, I don't think that, like, a person from 12 years ago, like, has had some, has had some time to change. And also, like... They've gone on a few dates. He can fuck other people right now. It's so true. He can fuck other people right now. They're not exclusive. They're not exclusive. That's very true. They're not going steady. They weren't even holding hands in that. Like, 
they were standing next to each other. They weren't even holding hands. That's an amazing point. So like he it can fuck who second. he wants. She can fuck whoever she wants. I agree. I agree. So. So overall, are you here for the relationship? I'm here for it. For both of them, I think it's like good. Like I said, Taylor needs a tall man. Is this a painful conversation for you? No, like, not at all. Okay. I feel like. Plus, I, she's not my taste, but I wish her well. And like you respect her. I, re I respect the hustle, yes. Okay. Well, our next story is about your queen. Okay. So Brittany Jean <laughs> is Spears. causing waves. Always. And yesterday she posted really an alarming video. Alarming. At first it seemed like every other video. A little blurry, <laughs> Vaseline on the lens, in the living room with the stripper pole, the low-rise mm. shorts, the sexy dance moves. Mm -hmm. But this time... The cap sleeve top. The cap sleeve top, <laughs> yes. With the, uh, with the elastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this time she was holding two knives. Mm -hmm. And I think that really, when I saw it, I was like, oh no. She Likewise. has offered an explanation, which I do feel like makes it a little better. Yeah, what was the explanation? That they were fake, right? No. So oh. she tells fans to lighten up about the knives, and she claimed that she was copying Shakira. Yeah, no, no, no. That's, I knew that was the reference. So I didn't know she was referencing a former work of art, which does make Not it Not even a, former. Shakira whipped out knives at the VMAs, VMAs. I believe, this mm -hmm. year. So that I understood the reference immediately. Oh, that's so funny. I didn't. Oh, I did. And I didn't even watch the VMAs. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> So I, her referencing something like makes it a little less scary. Yeah. But I just don't think she's like at a place in her life where no. she should be just like messing around with knives. No, I don't know no, if no, anybody no. should really ever. No, 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 no. Knife I mean, safety is real. Uh, I, I cut myself cutting cucumbers in the in the in the kitchen. You know, I like, cut a bagel I, after I, I, Yom like, Kippur. Thank you. Um, I, <laughs> I mean, remember when Lindsay had that knife out? Lindsay no. Lohan with the knife. And she was like holding it in a picture. It was it's Lindsay Lohan that. in the salon with, the, <laughs> with knife. the knife. Yes. Oh my God, that's so um, Lindsay. It's just, it's a, a little, yeah. And like whipping them around and dancing with it. It was quick movement. I know, like nunchucks. So, but part of me feels like I thought there was a, my friend sent me a comment on Britney's thing that said they were fake. Oh. That they were Halloween. Fake. Well, fake. if they were fake, then that's different. But they didn't look fake, is what I'm going to say. She wrote, I started playing with in the kitchen with knives today. Mm. Oh, she went, you're right. She went on to clarify that she edited the caption. Mm. That they are not real. Halloween is soon. Yep, 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 yep. Do you think that was someone from her team? Does she have a team? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't think that she has a team. But other Twitter users expressed concern, one writing that the knives were 100% real because an audible clang yeah, could yeah, be yeah, heard. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good point, too. But, you know, sometimes I have, like, Plastic that clangs. Yeah, I, I feel like know. it's a different clang, but I respect I, I, you, know, know, you wanting to protect your queen. No, it's just like, uh, yeah, the knives are a choice. The knives are a choice. I, I, I felt uncomfortable. I did too. And um, it, it wouldn't be my thing. I, I just don't think that, she, as much as I love her unhingedness, I don't think that she's unhinged enough to dance that frantically with knives. Yeah. And I honestly don't think that she's that skilled enough to dance with knives and not injure herself. 100%. So maybe that does conclude that they were in fact fake. Perhaps. I just, you know, she's no, she's not with Sam anymore. So like yeah. who is in the house to tell her like, don't play Didn't with knives. Didn't she get knives. a new assistant? I don't know. I'm, I'm not like a Britney stan. I thought I read something where she was in the car with her new assistant. Interesting. But her assistant's, except for Felicia, if we remember the good old Felicia days. I'm dead. She was a good assistant. The assistants past 2006, debatable. I feel like I could see you on one of those documentaries about Britney, just as like a super fan, giving mm -hmm. insight Very into much. like, you like read the legal documents, like yeah. you just know a lot. I don't know about the legal documents. <laughs> I'm not, I, I, I don't have the attention span to do that. I that. I love My book's only 220 pages, so way, a legal document, no. I want to thank you for that. Yeah. I love Quick. short books. Thank you. I think short books Let's are, get to the point. are vastly underrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Thank you. So we're wishing Brittany well, as usual. Oh, as always. Oh, I wanted to get your take on something because last week we reported, you know, she has to promote her book coming up. You know, you're doing a lot of podcasts, <laughs> yeah, yeah, talk, yeah. daytime talk. I, I don't... She's not really in the space to do that. So they're getting creative. And I don't know if you saw, they're re-releasing Crossroads in theaters. Work. Do you love that? I didn't I even loved see it. that. Um, I, you know, I don't need to go to the theaters to see it. So I, true. I, I, I just, just rather close my stream eyes. it. And to be honest, I think my favorite part of that movie is Kim Cattrall at the end. Of course. Like down. No, when she come, when Britney travels all the way and Kim Cattrall's like, get the fuck out of my house. Get out of my home. I'm get obsessed. Away. Away, peasant. I was actually just watching, you know, when they would release VHSs, they would do like bonus features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had like a scene with Kim Cattrall and Britney. And I guess I didn't realize at the time, but it was filmed during like the peak of Sex in the City. This was oh, just wonderful. like an extra. And she was like begging Britney to come to the set. You would love the girls. It's honestly an amazing moment. Oh, to Sex in the City? Yes. That would have been a great cameo. I know. Sex in the City did. 
Sex and the City and Will and Grace did the best cameos, and Britney what did do a cameo on uh, uh, one of the best cameos on Will and Grace ever. Let me say, you know what else has great cameos? Because I'm rewatching it mm -hmm. right now. The nanny. Oh yes, and some of the best fashions. The best fashion. The best down. fashions you've ever they seen. They had Elizabeth Taylor on. Work. It was. It's, it's like much older, so I feel like people don't like consider it as like one of those binge watching shows. Everybody's oh, it's rewatching. Incredible. Like, well, it's so good. It's and like and like Fran Drescher still looks everything hot. Do you know she's a cancer survivor? Did not. She's everything. She's my Jewish queen. Although I did read she converted to Buddhism. Oh. But we still claim her. We still claim her. Like as like a. As a people, you yeah. know, like, yeah. Once a Jew, always yeah, a Jew. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, our next story is a little Dancing with the Stars news. Ooh. Now, what overall, describe your Dancing with the Stars experience in one word. Oh, uh, um, mm, grueling. Yes. Grueling. Okay, because obviously. Mentally, physically, and emotionally. It really. And you had the physical, but some people go on who aren't, you know, in their peak physical mm -hmm. fitness yeah, yeah. and I think it's such a tough transition I think mm -hmm. Jamie Lynn will have a hard time we'll see if she gets past episode one there it, the only it is reason, a popularity contest it is a, well it is a popularity contest and like they will they've got elements that they can play with as far as like the scoring to keep certain people around um, and listen to me um, if there's a Britney night this entire season <gasps> she's staying on I don't care if it's if it's the semi-final they're right. keeping her ass on till Britney night and then she's getting the boot by the way I didn't even think of that, and that's an amazing call. Like, if there's a Britney night, she's staying until there. And if there's not a Britney night, the, the, the time that she does a Britney Spears song, she's going home. I, that's a beautiful, like, if, <laughs> if that's how it plays out, you just told a beautiful story. Thank you. Now, are you a Bravo girly? Um, here and there. Okay. Are you keeping up with Kyle and Mauricio? Oh, what well, are they separated? Are they together? We don't fucking know. We don't know. They're like, is she a le is right, she on right. a lesbian journey? Is she not? They're being really unclear. I think they're just kind of waiting for the season to premiere where they tell the story. Mm. But their their narrative thus far is like we've had we're having a rough year. But we're not separated and we're not divorced and we're not lesbian. Eh. Oh, like but but there's evidence of the uh, contrary. Maybe it's they just have an open marriage and that's the gag. That's the gag. Maybe that's the gag. So Mauricio's on Dancing with the Stars. Yes. Mauricio's extremely good looking. I think I think very he would be handsome. very interesting. They are a very hot couple. Yes, they both look very good. And it's making waves that Kyle was there supporting him. Oh, good for him. And, for and his little package, you know, they do his little packages mm -hmm. before the show. He like just weirdly blurts out this like scripted line about his wife. He's like, yeah, we're having a rough year. Like nobody asked. It was so weird. <laughs> um, but I think the Housewives community was was really gagged by mm. it because there's so much uncertainty and i think he is he pretty much is regarded as the hottest house husband wow although i, I think can't evan think of anybody who, who, who would you say is hotter i would say evan goldschneider but i'm biased because he's jewish I know. I, he's from jersey and actually his wife has oh. been demoted to friend of so he's not, Ooh, really, not he's, friend of he's really not wait considered. what's the new jer like what's the new jersey apple or peach what is it uh that's a great question what the fuck a, do they a hold? wrench <laughs> Bottle of hairspray. Can you look it up? <laughs> what do they hold? What do they hold? They hold diamonds in Beverly Hills, peaches in Atlanta. Jersey. New York, they hold apples. Apples. Yeah. What the hell do they hold? What's Beverly Hills? A diamond? A diamond. Yeah, yeah. They just put their hands on the Oh my their heads. god. Oh my god. That's so funny. I never oh realized my god, that. Not a hand on the hip. Not a hand on the hip. That is so B, B list right there. No, wow. it's giving like second tier. Yeah, very much. But it's really They're not. all friend of. But by the way, <laughs> that's so interesting because I think in the uh like tiers of housewives, Jersey is very high up there. It's consistently good since the very beginning. Okay, fair. So fair, it's fair. high. I up. was always like an Atlanta girl. Yeah. And then Beverly Hills I got into but mm -hmm. I've fallen off and like it's hard to keep up with it's all just of for them. me it's like it's too much like we're about to fight and what are we fighting it's about so and like it's just like I see it coming and it doesn't feel authentic like if y'all are fu like fuck fight yeah. I want to see y'all knuck and buck it's formulaic at this point which is why I think when Potomac came out it was so refreshing because mm. like they did it differently and they didn't give a fuck and Good. they weren't like out here and now it's like what about a, a housewives that's like you know like supportive like no drama like no. let's just okay never mind. no okay. what's your favorite unscripted reality show oh that's hard are you a selling a drag, does drag race count it's a, uh, it's more of a competition that's a competition like the voice i don't know know. i'm not like are you I'm, not big into reality no or have i've I, I okay i did like the first two seasons of selling sunset i mean it was some of the best so television. so good were you team christine quinn um i'm not like okay remember in the second season where like at the finale they're like girl you're being a mess like you keep doing nasty things and she's like i don't know what you're talking about it just like was like 
at that point, I was like, you're getting confronted. Yeah. Like, be a cool human being. But like, you know what, guys? Yes, I am. And I'm going to try to do better. Or like, yes, I am. Fuck you. And I'm going to keep being a bitch. I feel like you would do great on reality. I don't know. I'm, I'm very, I would like diffuse confrontation. I don't like confrontation. People think, cause like, and maybe you too, cause like we're very loud. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People think I'm like a fighter. No, and no, no. I'm no. so conflict averse. No. I will run for the hills. Mm -hmm. Like I will clench my butt. I, I hate, I'm, I, I'll never say anything. I'll have a conversation, anyone. but I'm not going to fight you. I will, I won't too have a pretty. conversation. I'm too pretty. Especially physical. Like, no, ma'am. So it's nice to see that um, Kyle and Mauricio are supporting one another. But yeah. do you think that the Dancing with the Stars lifestyle is good for a marriage in crisis? I feel like you're very busy. Yeah, it was, uh, I, I would say no. Maybe it's a good distraction. Maybe it's a good mm. time to be apart because we're both true. focused. In my book, I write about how Cheryl Burke was like uh, yes. about to, She at our season finale, she was like, this has been a great distraction, but I've oh. got to go figure out if I'm going to be with my Man. husband. Yeah. And, and they're not. And they're not. And so, he's with someone else now, right? right? Well, I think he was dating the girl. TLC. TLC. Or 3LW, excuse no, me. No, TLC. TLC, oh. TLC. No, Chili. that. Chili. 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 Yeah, yeah. That was like the craziest saga for the 90s kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it. And with the brothers. And they do a b podcast with the brothers. That's the thing. Everything in pop culture comes back to a podcast. It really does. Which is why I love what I do. <laughs> Today's episode is also brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place and all on your terms. Because girl, it's 2023. Like if you don't have a website for your business, whatever your business is, you're slacking, you're behind. And I know it can be very intimidating, like who knows how to code a website, I'm going to have to pay a million dollars to a company. You don't. Squarespace is here for you, whether you're an amateur, whether you're getting started out, whether you've been in business for 10 years, whether you need an e-commerce website, whatever your needs are, Squarespace will have it covered for you. They have so many different features. Like if you wanna sell custom merch, you can do that on a Squarespace website. If you wanna have an online store, like you work in e-commerce, but maybe you have a side hustle, you just have a business that's e-commerce, you can sell your products in an online store. And they have flexible website templates. So their templates will like literally build the website for you. You just put in your information and it looks so professional. It'll look so fancy, like you paid someone so much money, but it's really just you and Squarespace, a team of two. They also uh, allow you to do email campaigns. They have a great point of sale. So if you sell things in person, like at trade shows or farmer's markets, you can connect a Square Reader to your Squarespace app. So you'll keep up with your orders, your inventory, customer data. It'll all be in sync, in sync with your online store. So if you want to get started on Squarespace, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That's squarespace.com slash toast. Today's episode is also brought to you by Seed. So it's gut mania. You know, there's over 4 million posts on Instagram tagged hashtag gut health. I feel like everybody is trying to get their guts in order. It's like an issue everyone's having. And that's where Seed comes in. Seed is everything. Their DS01 Daily Symbiotic is a plant-based prebiotic and probiotic with 24 strain that has been clinically and scientifically studied for its benefits. It's free from 14 classes of allergens, so you don't have to worry about anything. It's sugar-free, it's vegan, it's soy-free, it's sesame-free, it's gluten-free, it's pea nut free, it's dairy free, it's shellfish free, it's corn free. Here's how it works. You take two capsules once a day on an empty stomach. So that could be like the first thing in the morning or two hours after your last meal. And what's so great about it and why it's different from other prebiotics and probiotics is that it's engineered to survive your external and internal environments. Like if you've taken a probiotic and you feel like it doesn't do, any, do anything, that's because it's actually not making its way down your digest, digestive tract. But seeds, capsule and capsule via cap, safeguards viability through digestion for delivery of an average 100% of your probiotic starting dose to your colon. The outer capsule also serves as an elegant barrier from oxygen, moisture, and heat, and there's no refrigeration necessary. So whatever your reasons for wanting to get your gut in check, there's also so many other benefits just getting your gut health in a good place, like your skin, like there's a million reasons. So the Seed DS01 Daily Symbiotic is fabulous and visit seed.com slash toast and use code toast to redeem 30% off your first month of Seed's DS01 Daily Symbiotic. That's seed, S-E-E-D, dot com slash toast and use code toast. Um, <laughs> our next story, what are your uh -huh. thoughts? Uh, before I like keep saying the story, yeah, I, just, I just want like your take on the person. Okay. What are your thoughts on the Kardashians? Oh, um, oof. like I res I res it's kind of like Taylor, like I respect the hustle, not necessarily for me. Mm -hmm. I also like, like, I, res I respect how family oriented they are. Yes. I respect the hustle. Yes. But I also think that they've been really toxic for like pop culture and the way that we, Consume. especially women, view themselves. Like I think it's, y'all, 
there's a lot of surgeries going on there. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. If you want the surgeries, go, go for, for it. it. I don't care. But like, don't act like they aren't there. No, I will say like, I ride hard for the Kardashians similar to Taylor, but I feel like there's <laughs> a lot of really valid criticisms of the Kardashians. Yeah, like anybody. And the difference is like, when I think people criticize Taylor, like I think it's invalid. Like I think it's dumb. Like okay. but with, with the Kardashians, like I, I agree. Like there's a lot of things about them that I could, you know, agree with you on if you were going to criticize yeah. them. Get your coin, but like get your coin responsibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Kourtney Kardashian had a baby shower, okay. and it appears and as this though is baby number. I think it's her fourth, but it's her first with oh, Travis wait, Barker. Courtney has four kids. Yeah, she had three with Scott. Three. Penelope, Mason, and Rain. Oh. <laughs> and now she's having one with Travis Barker oh, from Blink One Eighty Two. Okay. So they had a a baby shower and they were like posting a bunch of content and I think they spilled the beans on the baby's name because it was a deleted Instagram story oh. where uh, they were like all writing notes to the baby and it oh. said Dear Baby Rocky R O C K Y. R O C K Y. What are your thoughts? Hmm? Uh, it's I think it's trying a little hard because he's like a rocker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and it's, just like it's thematic. What, just like, what happened to Joshua? What happened to <sighs> Matthew? What what happened? To you biblical know? names. Like, just, just bring it back. Why do we have to be so creative? What is like, do you want to have kids? Mm, like 95% no. I like my time off. I like my money. 100%. Um, I still haven't unpacked all my trauma. 100%. So I'm like not trying Pass to put that on. on. But so if we'll you see. were, mm -hmm. what's like your baby name you love? Oh, I know this is really weird. And like, and it all stems from a, a movie. But I've always, I've always loved the, num the name Vincent. From what movie is that? I think it's uh, Ethan Hawke in like Gattaca or something like that. Interesting. I know that's so random. Do you think Vince Vaughn is hot? Vince Vaughn? No. You don't? No. 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 My oh, mom I think he's does. Hot. Yeah, My mom okay, maybe thinks he's, he's not, so like, hot. Maybe like he's not attractive to gays because I feel like a lot of women think he's hot, but I don't see like the gays. He was like he was in like Wedding Crashers. Yeah. 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 No. No. He's not attractive. Oh my to god! Me. I find him so cute. Yeah. Yeah. No. So who do you think is like the hottest? Whoa, hottest? straight straight oh, male celebrity. Hottest straight male celebrity of all time or like current? Current. Oof. Um, I'm just trying to gauge your type. Wow, that's I have a lot of varied types. Maluma's really hot. Agreed. But like also Bad Bunny, but like in a different way. Agreed. Um, Chris Evans is hot. Extremely. Duh. Um, the Hemsworth is hot. The Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth is hot. What do you think about Liam Hemsworth? Miley Cyrus's ex-husband. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. I agree. He's hot, but like, I'm not gagging. So who do you think is the hottest gay male celebrity? Oh, wow, 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 Because there's wow. only one answer. Oh. It's Luke Evans. Oh, Gaston. really? Gaston. Oh my God. It might just be that I like want to fuck Gaston. Oh, he is, he is very hot. And he's an amazing voice. He has an amazing voice, and he's definitely like, mm, I, I could see him having a good time. He keeps it on the low, but like I think he, he, he does. I think he likes to party. I think he's like definitely a slut, but I think he keeps it on the low. I have nothing to back that up. It's just on intuition. No, but he has been like criticized by the gay community for not being like so public and and out with his sexuality. And he's just said like I'm a private person. Yeah, that's what are fair. your thoughts on that? That's fair. I think that's like, fair. That's fair. Like what? Mm, could he do more? Sure, we could all do more. Could he do more? Sure, yeah. but like, right? It's, it's his fine. life. It's his life. Let him live. Do you think about ever like when you get on the bike? Mm -hmm. Who's watching? Because mm -hmm. I feel like everyone has a Peloton, especially mm -hmm. Pelotons are expensive, so mm -hmm. like celebrities definitely have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ever thinking like maybe Barbara Streisand's watching my Peloton? Do you think Babs? That? Not not her specifically. But like, do you think? No, I, I I guess I'm not thinking about it. Um, I'm just like trying to get get, get through. through. Um. I'm not really worried about what celebrity is, is you, taking my That's so funny. Ride. That's literally all I would be thinking you think about. That? Yeah, because yeah. it would be the only thing to get me through. I'd be like, girl, stop sweating. Like, get it together. Catch I'm always red, red pants watching. Here's my thing. And, like, I went to um, I went to the vice president's house, and I tried to ask all the staffers who Joe Biden's favorite Peloton instructor was. Just because I'm sure, curious. For a fact that he toms? He has a bike. I know he has a bike. Wow. Because it was, like, there was an article that was, like, is he going to take it to the White House? Because, like... There might security. be security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They it's a don't national know. security it's a National issue. security risk. So, yeah, like, oh my God, that's so I just want to know. I, I don't even care if it's me. I just want to know. I feel like it really could be you. Maybe. Is there any like drama, like between the different riders? I mean, the different coaches? instructors. Yeah. Everyone tries to ask that, and like, honestly, no. I wish. Oh. I wish there was. We're pretty like all supportive of each other. Like, yeah. we're all doing our own thing, but like, we all like support each other the, the best we can. Um, I think the most drama is like I get really annoyed with the girls because like we have two dressing, two like oh, changing rooms right. in the green room, and there's like sometimes like 
eight of us in there or like five or six and then like I, I don't even go in there yeah it's a lot like i want to i just it's like living with your sisters and i don't have sisters and like trying to share two bathrooms right so that's the most tea i can give you is the peloton hq studio in new york yeah it's on 31st and 10th that's so interesting yeah 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 How, so you go every day not every day like uh three to five days a week it depends on the week and this might be a dumb question yeah, yeah. are the classes live or the pre-recorded so majority of the classes are live and then go on demand right um we have people in the classes like a live studio audience i've seen that thursday friday saturday sun like one on thursday one on monday and then all day friday saturday sunday and if somebody wanted to sign up for that how would they do it you have to like go online and find tickets i and i'm not i'm not trying to compare myself but go. so many of the girlies have just been like it's it's easier to get taylor swift tickets than to get a bike in my class i believe it how many bikes are there like there's 20? only 40 so like you know it's, it's i'm not limited. selling out metlife but like you know it it's hard it, it's hard to get a ticket it counts and if they if they could be on StubHub, they might they might they might i love that that's so cool it's like a like a concert yeah a little bit but you couldn't do it during covid right no. Oh my God, I was cackling well, in your Well, with people, people in the thing? People? Yeah, no, no, absolutely not. We didn't have people back in the studio until like last summer. When you were, I didn't know this, but when you were talking about you getting COVID during Dancing with the Stars oh, and you gosh. had to dance in your house on Zoom. Yes. Was that one of the lower points of your life? I almost quit. <laughs> no, I legitimately almost quit. It was like week two. I, I called my boss and I was like, listen, I don't, That's I don't so know. Funny. I don't know. I, I, can I just like quit? Right. She's hiatus. like, no, you're not quitting. And also Cheryl Burke was like, bitch, you're not quitting. I was oh, like, okay, we'll figure it out. So I had to set up my whole living room and dance to Britney Spears in my living room. I'm sorry. That was hysterical. I know it was, I just wanted to get through the night. And the thing is like, I was like, I did all this hard work and they still gave me shit scores. I, you know what? You should have gotten tens, tens, tens across the board. Just for that. Just given the circumstances. Thank you. I agree. Give me a little pity here. That's so funny. <laughs> All right, our fifth story before we dive into some advice okay. is major news in the world of Airbnb. Oh. You can now spend the night in Shrek's Swamp. Oh, I saw that. It's in Ireland? Or it's Scotland? in Scotland. Scotland. So Sorry. the mud laden, moss covered, murky watered swamp is situated among the rolling hills of Scotland where guests can stay up late, swap stories, and eat like an ogre because in the morning, donkeys making waffles. So they have a really recreated here. I'll show you a picture. But I, al I also need a man that looks like human Shrek. To, to greet me with breakfast. I agree. Because Human Shrek was hot. You think? Yeah. So you tap that? I tap it. Yeah. What about Donkey? Smash or pass? <laughs> I am an ass man, so ah! smash! Good answer. Did we use that one? Okay, we did. Okay, sorry. <laughs> That wasn't a ride, so. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I love, I think Airbnb is getting so creative. You know, you, see, you could uh, stay in Gwyneth Paltrow's mm -hmm. uh, guest cottage. That's rich. How yeah. much is it? I mean, and it, is she there? It was like a sweepstakes. So oh, only one person's going to do it. it. And yes, she, you had to have dinner with her and her husband. Oh, that uh, sounds... I would be so hungry Hunt. after that meal. We would be Uber Eats in <laughs> Postmates, yeah, McDonald's, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the way. Just yeah, double up on that Ozempic girl, okay? Literally! <laughs> I literally am obsessed with you. I think that this is a fabulous idea. I think, you know, it's hard in this day and age. Every media company is so thirsty. You can't even get an Airbnb in New York anymore. It's so, so true. But you can be at Shrek's house. On the rolling hills of and Scotland. And is... Um, who, uh, who, uh, is Universal not coming for these people? I'm sure it's a partnership between oh, okay. whoever owns the Shrek. And Universal. I think it's Pixar. No, um, no, 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 no. It's Universal. It's Cause Universal? Because they, they have a Shrek ride at Universal Studios. Are you a Disney adult? Uh, I, okay, I have a Mickey Mouse tattoo, but I do not oh identify. I do not identify as a Disney adult. I just love Mickey. Okay, but let's, you could read me for all let's that. Let's get one thing straight. Okay. You came for the Swifties when you're a full-blown Disney Ooh, adult. Read that, me, bitch. Read me. That is rich. Mm -hmm. That is rich. It is. It is. How many and, times a year you go to Disney? Okay, okay, okay. Here's the thing. I went twice this year. Twice this year. And like we're only halfway through the year. I know. I hadn't been since 2018. Okay. And me and my friends were like, let's go. And my friend Corey is definitely a Disney adult, and he planned the whole trip. So I was like, work, work. Beautiful. Amazing. Which Disney? World. Is that Orlando? Yeah, Orlando okay. with all the parks. Yeah. So we went. We had a great time. Fantastic. Two months later, <laughs> Disney calls me and asks me to do an event there. And they oh. were like, we will fly you out. We'll give you a hotel. Oh. And we'll give you and your friends the access VIP. to the park. I'm not going to I'm not going to say no to that. You're a businessman. I'm not going to say no to that. I agree. So I said yes to it. So that is why I've been twice. In, Second in, time in doesn't years. count. You were working. Thank you so much. Okay. So, the tattoo is a little misleading. I know. 
What, which is was your first tattoo? I'm so intrigued this one right here. by tattoos. I have this one right here. It's a heart on the top of my hand. Love. And I have it with my best friend. So <gasps> when we shake hands, it's right there. That's I also, cute. this is the first one I got. And I got it drunk at a party because I worked for this. I freelanced for this uh, experiential marketing company. Okay. And they had a tattoo artist at their holiday, com at their holiday That's party. That's very experiential. Yep. And so my friend was like, you're drunk enough. I always, he'd always been pressuring me to get a tattoo. And so we got a tattoo. So how many do you have? Cause I four, see three. And then I'm done. Oh, four. I'm oh, done. All on one arm. All on one arm. Keep it, keep it right here. And I, I honestly don't want to get any more because there've been so many photo shoots that I've done that they have to cover them up. Oh. Cause this artist, they can never get a hold of her to like copyright to like sign off on it. Right. And I'm just like enough. No. And the Disney one is a big yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, thank you for doing the stories. Of with course. Me. You we have love amazing hot topics. Takes. Great. And we have three submissions. So we do a mm -hmm. weekly segment. It's called Dear Toasters. If you guys ever mm. want to submit your, to, you know, get some advice from two unhinged girlies, <laughs> feel free to head to thetoastpodcast.com. Submission is totally anonymous. And we picked a, some raunchy ones for you. Love you know, it. we're kind of a tra we're traditional Love married spicy. girlies, but I figured Are you'd you be married? Able yes. Oh, congratulations. For like 100 years. Oh, six wonderful. Years. Beautiful ring. Thank you so much. I, I just got it resized because oh. Ozempic, it didn't fit anymore. Oh, how what? And that, ugh, that, that was, was a good problem to have. It, I can't lie. Like I went to pick it up at the jeweler yesterday, and like I, I'm so skinny. Like I just couldn't get. Did over you it. love? Did you love going to the jeweler? Be like, guys, I've lost a lot of weight, and I really need to resize this ring. I did, but like the size of my ring before was like actually embarrassing. Oh, okay, so okay. Like, oh. Yeah, for, okay. Let me tell you, my sister, her engagement ring is a size three and a half. Okay. Mine was a seven and a half. Oh my god! So I just had these like big sausage fingers and. So yes, it was a win, but I'm glad to have those fingers you behind know, worth me. Worth every penny you spent. Worth every penny. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey guys, I found you guys on TikTok. I need advice in a bad way. I uh -oh. love when people find us on TikTok. Are you obsessed with TikTok? I was love. stalking your TikTok And that's kind of today. where I found you guys before too. Oh my God, I love. Yeah. Okay. So I was going through my boyfriend's phone and I came oh. across... <laughs> that, there's, wait, baby, <laughs> baby. The, that's, you don't even need to go any further. This is the problem. It's you were true. going through your man's phone. It's true. You have no trust. Like you don't trust. Him. I'm gonna tell you. Just break up now. Yeah. You gets, don't. You don't trust this man. It gets worse. The, the 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 relationship is in turmoil. But keep going. And it's so true. Jackie always says like, if you're gonna go snooping, you're gonna find something you don't want to see. So like, yeah. and it's face gonna the demon. it's gonna re solidify whatever thoughts or insecurities that you're gonna have. 100%. So no matter what you see, it, you're gonna see it through the lens that you want to see it through. Yeah. But go keep going. So I was going through my boyfriend's phone <laughs> and I came across a picture I took of one of my friends in her bathing suit that was on my camera roll. Oof. It was never on a social media platform. Oof. The photo even said in the top corner live because she had taken the live photo. Work. I asked him about it and he claimed he screenshotted it off of Instagram, which I debunked immediately. Uh -oh. This was never posted. He gave no further explanation for himself and denied that he saved it for my camera roll, which was the only place that that picture was. I'm just not sure how to move forward with this information. Well, he obviously has access to your phone. Right. You two are both snooping through each other's phones. You're sno both snooping through each other's phones. I do want to offer one potential. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that this is what happened, but I could see. I love to airdrop. I'm always airdropping things. And, you know, sometimes when you select a bunch of photos, you also pick like a random one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. have you recently airdropped your boyfriend something? It's probably, probably not. not. Probably not. And also he said he, but he also said he clicked oh. it from Instagram. So oh. like, yeah, you're right, you're right. He's, he already like told on himself. It's clear that you guys have like major trust Listen, issues. You guys have major trust issues. He needed some um, content to jack off to. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's of your best friend mm -hmm. or your friend in a bikini. It's weird. Um, uh, I, I think you guys have trust issues. You might want to just like go ahead and, and uh, uh, call it quits on this one. I'm sorry. I, I kind of agree. This is, first of all, it's just weird because now you can never hang out with this friend and your boyfriend. Two, he's scrolling through your phone. You're scrolling through his phone. This it just sounds like red flag alert everywhere. Yeah. I just don't think this is like a great relationship. Yeah. Or yeah. I don't, how do you, how do you, how would you like salvage this? I, that's the thing. Like I think you're beyond a point where like communication, cause you, you confront him, good on you. Like you saw yeah, something yeah. that bothered you and you confronted him and he just lied. So you're making no progress. Yeah, yeah He's yeah, gaslighting yeah. you. Like you literally saw the photo, it's live. Like us tech girlies, <laughs> like we know. We work in IT, like we know you yes. can't screenshot a live photo Genius and it still bar says right live. here, thank you. Like we know, I hate when people like, like I'm speaking facts and you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, it's frustrating. Yeah, yeah. I agree with Cody. I don't think that this is like right for you. Nope. 
Time to Are you go. ready for our next one? Yes, of this course. This one's weird. <laughs> hey, girl. And the first one wasn't. No, this one's like actually. Okay. Like, it's not weird. It's um, I actually don't know how to help this girl. Oh, okay. I'm a fairly new listener, but I have a dilemma, and I think that you can help. My fiance and I have been together for almost four years. We have a wonderful relationship and a great sex life. Okay. A few months ago, I tried calling him daddy in bed, Ooh. and he really liked it. Yes. It didn't do much for me, but I didn't dislike it, and he did like it, so I started using it every now and then. Okay. The issue is when he started calling himself daddy oh. all the time. I find it so cringy and Oof. icky. I don't want to embarrass him by telling him it's cringy. So I just, do I stop using it and hope that he does and it fades? Or do I find a nice way to tell him to stop? Oof. Much love and thank you for your input. I feel like you're equipped to answer this. Oh, I, I loved the I loved where the story was going. I know. Like, and then like every other straight man, they ruined it. Took it too far. They took it too far. I know. Like you can't really call yourself daddy. No, 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 no. Especially like in the third person. In I'm sure it's person, in the third. Like daddy likes that. And like, also like over breakfast. Do that for daddy. Yeah. Oh, it's over breakfast. She's saying not even in sex anymore. Oh, like, just goodness. all around the house. Like daddy needs to do his laundry. Like stop. Oh. Stop. Okay. It's wait, 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 wait. You might have to lie a little bit here. Okay. Here's my here's myself. Okay. Hey babe, I it really fucking turns me on when you like when I call you daddy in bed. Mm -hmm. But like it, I really want it to be in the special. bedroom and special. Save it. So can you save it and can I because you're so hot and like you yes! have all the power, can I be the one that only calls you daddy? I love that. That kind of works, right? Because yeah, like men are so moronic. Yeah, like, yeah. You yeah. have to hype them up, being like, yeah, "I'm yeah. doing it for you." Yeah, I'm doing it for you. Right. It's like I want you to feel special, and I want to be kind of like submissive and be the right. one that does it. Right, and also like if you just come out and tell him, like he will be embarrassed, and like yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. It is something that started in the bedroom, and you just don't want to cause any. Yeah, problems so like there. just say like you really want to keep it in the bedroom. Be like it's my thing. Like it only yeah, yeah. works when I do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Without embarrassing him, I, I think actually, that's pretty good advice. I actually think that's excellent advice. Okay, I will great. add nothing further. Okay, great. Our third and final one. My boyfriend just broke up with me. Okay. <laughs> Pre breakup, he gave me a ten carat diamond tennis necklace Ooh. from the ring concierge as a commitment to me for Valentine's Day. As Not a the commitment ring concierge. to me, a ring con. <laughs> Use code toast. <laughs> it, it feels weird to keep it now mm -hmm. that he has broken up with me and he's broken that commitment, but it's also 10 carats. Mm -hmm. Do I keep it? Do I sell it? Give it to my mom? Give it back to him? Oof. Love you both so much. Definitely don't give it back to him. Definitely If he has not. a ring concierge, he has money. He has money. He's not worried about this 10K bracelet. Here's the thing. Like, no. In the state of New York, like an engagement ring or any sort of like jewelry, it's considered a gift. You don't have to give it back. Wonderful. Legally. So, so you don't have to give it back. The law is on your side. The law's on your side. And he has like, money. Isn't that part of the female experience? Like when you're 80, you have this box of things and you're like, oh, my first, first boyfriend gave me this. Oh, this was my first engagement. Like mm, mm, you collect mm, mementos mm. of your love life and this is yeah. just one of them. Keep it. Uh, if you fall upon hard times, sell that it's shit. It's got diamonds sure. in it right now. It's not 10 carats. Honestly, I say sell it. Oh. Because here's the thing. I read an article how like, you know, millennials, Gen Z, like they're moving away from real diamonds. No offense to your ring over You're there. You're right, Earthmind. They're, they're, moving, they're moving into like synthetics yeah. that like really Lab look gold. well. So I think the value of diamonds is going to drop. This is coming from the business side of me. Mm. So sell it now, cash out, and like invest it in something else. Okay, that's interesting. Could one make the argument that because everyone's moving away from earth mine diamonds mm. they're going to become more rare and therefore more valuable mm, i think that's you know it's possible hope you're just being hopeful <laughs> but that's fine no it's like um, what, did I, what did i what have i been doing all this, i think all this i don't think we're going to run out of diamonds that's fair i don't think we're going to run out of diamonds i think that the, the market will be there and like i don't think you need to like what keep. are you going to keep on to the, when, and like when you get to your new man like are you going to wear this necklace I just want to say, like, I think you should keep it. Okay. We're, we, we're, we're in a disagreement. We're in disagreement. I think both offer, neither scenario is bad or good. You mm. sell it, you get money. Sell, 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 baby. You're investing in yourself. Yes. And you keep it, you always have diamonds on you. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you never know when you could have to flip. From the ring concierge. From the ring concierge. <laughs> Cody, you give amazing advice. Thank you so much. You have amazing hot takes. I'm so happy to have met you. You are mm. welcome back anytime Thank you want to co-host. Thank you. You really smashed it. Uh, thank you. Pun intended. Exactly. Now, mm. I cannot recommend this book enough. I'm literally so excited to go home and finish it. I'm almost done. XOXO Cody, anywhere you get books. Yes. You can follow Cody on all the social media platforms mm -hmm. at Cody Rigsby. Uh -huh. I think TikTok is like a, 
a space or a dash because like someone had my name. That's disgusting. I know. Fuck them. And That's I tried disgusting. to get them banned, but didn't work. That's disgusting. It's okay. It's okay. I'm the you know the one with the check mark. No, you're the one. Yeah, we yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't. You're at a, you're a celebrity. Like we thank said, you so much. Bring it back. Um, so make sure to follow him everywhere. Catch him on Peloton and enjoy the book. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And thank you guys so much for listening to the Toast the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So it's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeart Radio, Castbox, all the places where I visit a podcast. Find us a Toast, leave a five star review about how beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Have an amazing day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, booze. Bye.